Hello, and welcome to the West Branch Kitchen for Flavor Bites. I'm Kendra, and today I'll be showing you how to make a delicious and hearty chicken pot pie. This single crust pie is a great way to use leftover rotisserie or canned chicken, as well as leftover vegetable scraps or frozen pre-cut veggies. It's the perfect comfort food on cold and rainy days. Let's go ahead and get started by going over our ingredients. For the pie crust, you will need one cup plus one tablespoon of all-purpose flour, one third of a cup of cold butter, a half teaspoon of salt, and three to five tablespoons of cold water. The temperature of the water and the butter is very important, but we'll get to that a little bit later. For the filling, you will need one medium to large carrot, one yellow or white onion, two stalks of celery, some salt and pepper, some ground dried thyme, about two cans worth of pre-cooked chicken, and about one cup of chicken broth. Chicken pot pie is incredibly customizable. Feel free to substitute vegetables, make additions like mushrooms, or make it vegetarian by cutting out the chicken entirely. The equipment you'll need, in addition to an oven and stove top, is a large saute pan, a cutting board, a nine inch pie plate, glass or ceramic is fine, a rolling pin, a nice sharp knife, a spatula or spoon to stir your filling with, and a bowl to mix your flour. Optionally, you can also use a pastry cutter or a pastry brush. Let's get started by making our pie crust and preheating our oven to 425 degrees. The first thing you're going to do for the pie crust is put your flour and salt into a large mixing bowl and just give that a quick stir. I'm going to use my hands for most of this, but I did just wash them, so they're clean. If you're going to do this by hand, make sure they're clean. Next, add your butter into the bowl. Make sure it's cubed. It just makes the pieces a little bit easier to manage and cut into the flour. You can also use vegetable shortening if you would like. Now, with your fingers or a pastry cutter, start rubbing the butter into the flour and salt. This might take a minute and your hands are going to get a little bit messy. If you're using a pastry cutter, this process might go a bit faster. And you're going to keep doing this until your mixture resembles coarse breadcrumbs. So we basically just want the butter more evenly distributed in the flour and salt and in much smaller pieces than what they are right now. All right, we're getting close. I'm just going to cut this in a little bit more. Got a couple more big chunks in there. So we'll just work those out. Okay, when you're happy with how your mixture looks, you can go ahead and start adding the water. I'm pretty happy with this. The biggest chunks of butter are about the size of a pea, which is just about right. Now, adding the water is the hardest part. I mentioned earlier that you want your water to be cold as well as your butter. Cold water and butter make for a really nice, tender, flaky pastry. It has to do with how the, the water evaporates and creates pockets in the pastry, creating flakes. So to add the water, what I like to do is go about a tablespoon at a time and sprinkle it over the flour and then give it a mix. You wanna make sure that as much of the flour is hydrated as possible you might need all five tablespoons. You might only need three. It'll really just depend on how your flour absorbs all the water. And when it starts to kind of clump together, you know you're getting close. Don't add any more water than the five tablespoons, just because, again, your pastry might get a little bit tough if you do that. And try not to knead your dough when you're seeing if it will gather together. If you do, you're going to develop the gluten in the flour, and we don't want to do that. We want a very weak pastry, not like a strong bread dough. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how mine looks. So just gently kind of gather that into a ball, like so. 
Again, try not to knead it. Now we'll just cover our little dough ball with plastic wrap or a clean kitchen towel and set it in the fridge to rest. Ideally, you want it to rest for at least 10 minutes, um, but if it's a little bit less or a little bit more, it'll be perfectly fine. So I'm gonna go put this in the fridge. Next, we need to start preparing our filling. And the first step we need to take in this process is to cut and dice our vegetables. Before you get started, make sure that you thoroughly rinse your carrots and celery, especially the celery as they typically have some dirt on the root end. We're gonna start by cutting up our carrot. To do this, I like to cut it in half first, just to make the pieces a little bit easier to manage, and then make a vertical slice in it so that I have a flat surface to work on. Then try and make your edges even. Just start slicing down. Make sure to keep your fingers out of the way and you can try to use your knuckles as a guide for the back of the knife just to try and keep your pieces consistent so they all cook down at about the same rate. That's done. So now we're going to move on to our onion, which we're going to dice. To do this, start by peeling the skin off your onion. My skin is pretty well off now, so I shouldn't need to do anything fancy. But if you have stubborn onion skin, what you can do is just take your knife and run a line down it. And then you should be able to just take the skin off in one big go. Although sometimes it will still be stubborn. Next, cut your onion in half from root to tip, but do not cut the root off. Then place your onion flat side down. Go ahead and cut off the tip. Again, you can freeze this bit for vegetable stock or compost it, the same with the skins. Now, put your hand flat on top of your onion to keep it steady and make some horizontal cuts in the onion until the root, but try not to cut through the root. Having it attached makes it a lot easier to handle and it doesn't wiggle around. I usually do two to three cuts, but you can do more. Next, take your knife and make vertical slices in your onion. And then just slice down. Again, keep your fingers out of the way and you can try to use the back of your knuckle to guide the knife. Just be careful if you're doing that though. Our carrots and onions are done. So now we just need to chop our celery. This bit is really easy. Just stack your celery on top of each other, cut off the bottom. And if you have a leafy top, cut that off too, and just start cutting into slices. Before we start cooking our filling and while our pie plate is empty, we're going to roll out our crust. So first, on a clean floured work surface, grab your pie dough from the fridge and pat it into a nice disc. I have just sprayed this worktop down with a food safe sanitizer. You can do this at home or you can just use a clean cutting board. So pat it into a rough disc shape and it might crumble off, that is okay, it's normal. Now sprinkle some flour on top of your pie dough as well as on your rolling pin and start to roll it into a circle. It might move around on you, that's okay. And you'll probably need to re-flour your work surface and your rolling pin just to keep it from sticking. And again, if it starts to crumble on you, that is fine, just stick it back together. It's one of the beauties of a short crust pastry like this. You can just stick it back together again. And you want to roll it until it is slightly larger than your pie plate. Mine is very crumbly. And there's some that's stuck in the bowl. So let's just go ahead and place that on there. Now, once you have it to the rough size you need, take your empty pie plate, flip it upside down, and cut out around the top of it. If you have enough crust, try and leave a bit of a border 
If you don't have quite enough, it's okay. This just helps you ensure that you have the perfect size every time. Then, once you have that cut out, if you have enough scrap dough, feel free to make some cute decorations. If not, not a problem. Just wrap it back up in plastic wrap or cover it with a dish towel and put it back in the fridge. With our vegetables prepared and our pie crust cut and waiting, we can go ahead and start cooking our filling. So in a large saute pan over medium high heat, go ahead and melt two tablespoons of butter. And once your butter is melted, you can dump in your vegetables. It might take a minute for the butter to melt. And if it's sputtering a little bit too much and starting to brown, just turn your heat down. All right, that's melted. So I'm gonna add my vegetables and you can just add them all in one go. Now you're going to saute them, stirring frequently. Once they've started to cook down a bit, you can add your seasonings. I like to just sprinkle them in and add them to taste. And the sooner you add your seasonings, the more time they get to meld the flavors together and it just makes it really nice. So we're just gonna add a bit of salt and pepper and give that a stir. Adding salt early also helps the vegetables to cook down because the salt helps them release their water. And we'll go ahead and add just a little bit of thyme and then we'll taste it in a little while and see if we need more. Now you're going to saute these until the onions are translucent and the carrots begin to turn a little bit tender. This could take anywhere from five to 10 minutes. It smells really good. <laughs> If you want to add less butter, say maybe just a tablespoon, that's completely fine. You'll just need to adjust your flour later on when you add it. If you want to use more butter, go for it. Again, you'll just need to adjust your flour, which we are going to go ahead and add now. So because I used two tablespoons of butter, I'm going to add two tablespoons of all-purpose flour, and this will just act as a thickener because we're essentially making kind of like a stew. So just sprinkle that over your vegetables and stir it until all the vegetables are coated and the raw smell of the flour has kind of dissipated. Then once your flour has started to cook down, you can start adding your chicken stock. You can also use vegetable or beef stock if you would like. And we're going to start with about one cup of chicken stock. You might need a little bit more, you might need a little bit less. It will all just depend on the amount of flour that you added. So go ahead and start gently pouring that in and give it another stir. It should start to thicken. Now at this point, if you can see it on the camera, our stock has really, really thickened, so we have a nice thick gravy. And now we're just going to add in our chicken and stir it until it's heated through. Again, you can use canned pre-cooked chicken, you can use rotisserie chicken, leftover chicken from earlier in the week, or if you wanna make it fresh, you definitely can. And you can cook it in whatever way you like. At this point, if you think your sauce is a little bit too thin, go ahead and add a bit more flour. It will continue to thicken in the oven, so don't go too crazy with the flour, otherwise you'll get a really gluey um, texture, and that's just not as good. If it looks a little too thick, go ahead and add some more chicken stock. Once your filling looks like this, you can go ahead and put it into your pie plate. Be careful when you're doing this, just because the filling will be really hot. So pour it into your pie plate and spread it out as evenly as you can. Try not to make a mess. And once it's all in there and spread out, get your pie crust out of the refrigerator and get ready to put that on top. We're almost done. 
the last thing we need to do is just put our pie crust on top of our pie. So gently set your pie crust over the top of the filling. If you have some overhang, you can either trim it off or you can kind of decoratively crimp it. We'll see if mine wants to crimp. It's a little rough around the edges, so it might look even, it might look a little wonky, but that's okay, it's a pot pie. It can be nice and rustic and homey. If you have any decoration pieces, go ahead and stick those on. Now, optionally, you can brush this whole thing with an egg wash, which is just a beaten egg with a splash of water in it. It just helps to make sure that the crust gets a really nice golden brown color in the oven. A plain crust is fine, it just doesn't have quite the same visual appeal, so I always like to do an egg wash. Try and get it as evenly as you can on there. Oops, a piece of crust just fell off. Finally, cut a steam hole in the center of the pie. If you have decorations in the center, you can cut the steam hole off to the side. And this is ready to go into our 425 degree oven for 30 to 40 minutes or until a nice golden brown. Now, if you have a shallow pie plate, it might start to bubble up and overflow, so you can always put a cookie sheet underneath the pie plate just to keep your oven clean. It's time to get our pie out of the oven. Make sure you have oven mitts on for this. All right, here is our finished pie. The crust is a lovely golden brown thanks to that egg wash. Now, if you can stand to, let it cool for about 15 to 20 minutes before you start cutting it, uh, just to help the filling settle. It'll make sure that you get a clean cut and keep the filling from spilling out everywhere after you cut it. If you're like me though, and can't stand to wait longer than five minutes, just blow on it before you take a bite. It will be super hot. It is still kind of bubbly and boiling and you'll burn the inside of your mouth if you don't. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Flavor Bites. Enjoy your pot pie and I'll see you next time. Bye.